Hello, Baldwin Beauties. Hello, Baldwin Beauty Schools. Hey, welcome. Welcome again to online learning. So um, hopefully you'll get a lot out of today. I am Kimberly and today is March 25th and we are continuing our education on distance learning. We're gonna learn how to do that a little bit better. So I'd like to just take the first few minutes for everybody to clock in. Thank you, Brenna. Thank you, Lynn. Make sure that you specify whether you're from the North or the South School so that Alana, who's keeping track of your attendance can separate the two schools. And I'm gonna take a moment to say hi. Hi, Kimmy. Hey, Taylor Campbell, Lauren Lopez, Emily Molina, Jennifer Orr. I know you. Hey, Lynn. Sam Cap, McKenna Clucker, Brooke, Chloe Long, Amber Crone, Lauren Baldwin. Welcome, you guys. It's good to see your participation. Um, for those of you that are new to the chat, my name is Kimberly Bellinger. I am a um, licensed teacher. I like to call myself, or Randy calls me a guru, but uh, I've been teaching for a long time. I'm at the South Campus. So if you don't recognize me or my voice, go ahead and just make sure that when you comment in the live chat that you put your first and last name down, especially if you have like a code name so that Alana, um, who is one of our student instructors at the North Campus can record you. Hi, Miranda. Julia, hi, Bennett. Amber Crumb. Brianna Alonzo, Alexis Lazo. Okay. Promise to go. You're going to have to put your real name because we want to make sure you get those hours. Uh, Emma O, same thing to you. Hi, Lily. Hello, Morgan. Good morning, Melissa, or afternoon, actually. I just woke up, so I'm a little slow, but I do have my little coffee cup right here. And this is just plain old black coffee with sugar. I'm an old school girl. I uh, had to leave early to go and gather some materials and go to Dollar General and try to get paper towels. Uh, roll call, Alana saying roll call. So boss lady wants y'all's names. Make sure you put your first and last name and what school or what campus you reside. Hi, Vicky. Hi, Daisy. Hi, Melissa. Hi, McKenna. I'm only going to say hi to you guys one time because I got a lot to teach y'all today. Wendy gave me a whole big lesson plan for you guys. Marina Flag, Stacy Murray, Consuelo. Yes, Connie. Cassandra. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Yasmin. Hey, Chloe. Aubrey, we miss y'all too, man. I'm dying right now without you guys. I don't know how to describe the, uh, I, I'm glad that we're gonna have this time apart so we can come together even stronger. Maribella Hernandez from North School, Alexis Cisneros, very good. So I'm gonna give you guys just a few minutes to, um, Make yourself known and clock your hours. Um, Alana is logging them as we speak. Hey, Mary. Hey, Lauren. Hey, Emily. So um, while you guys are clocking in and getting situated, just want to say that I have my spread. We're at home. I've been at home. I don't go out a lot anymore these days because, you know, of the whole situation that we're going through, the coronavirus is real. It is a reality. It is a um, sign of the times for all of us to realize how important disinfection and cleaning and hand washing is. Um, most viruses are spread by human to human contact. That's how they're able to travel the best way um, for them to get with somebody else. 
So what we're doing in this chapter is trying to make sure you guys are very, very well aware of all the stuff that is going on out there as far as contamination goes. So you will need pen and paper. I'll take this time to let you guys go get pen and paper if you want to get your notes or your cosmetology fundamentals textbook. Now would be the time to do that while we're taking roll call. Hi, Brisa. Hi, Sydney. Hello, Lauren. Lauren Lopez, North School. Kimberly Root, North School. Joelle. Hey. Hi. Hi, Alyssa. We are so, so sad at this time to not be able to be with you guys one-on-one -on -one like we're used to being, but bear with us. Wendy is working very diligently to try to make it as easy as for, as easy as for all of us, really. Um, Randy has been a um, very integral part of the student finances and student aid. So don't worry about any of that right now. Just worry about keeping yourselves at home safe, um, no contact, practice social distancing, no matter how hard it is, um, and just do what you have to do to, to make this go away. So do your part in everything. Um, today I have my Pyridar Ling 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 Ling. If you are an essential oil person like I am, I'm gonna hold that to the camera so you guys can see. Um, you will understand that essential oils are essential. They actually change your mood and your spirit and your energy in a room. Um, we practice it at work at the South School. Um, and we make sure that we have the right essential oil for the day. So if we're rowdy and need a little calm, Alana likes the Langley, which is good for us. If we need energy and uh, stamina and uplifting, I like peppermint, which is good for us. So I think that helps a lot um, in our daily work. So practice that if you don't. Hi, Tabitha, Marisol, Jazzy. B, Elliot's son, Barbie. Okay, thank you, Barbie. It's awesome, Aubrey, Ashley, Saldana, Allison. You have some essential French fries? Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good, too. Leslie, good to see you. Taryn Mc McLevine is north, top of the Kelly. So, again... Take this time to log in, students, so we can get on with learning. Uh, it's 12.01 right now, and I'm probably going to give you another minute to get yourselves uh, timed in, and because we got to do it time-wise now. So timing in is important on this uh, studio. Make sure that you're getting your hours and you're turning in your assignments that you're writing stuff down. Today is going to be a lot of notes, so I suggest you, if you haven't already done so, get pen and paper now. Hello, Erica. Hello, Olivia. Monica Merga, North School. Sam. Hello, Sam Sladish, North School. Very good. 73, that's good. Michelle, too, Joe. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> Yaritza, all right. Hi, Yaritza. Get your pen and paper, Yaritza. Hi, Frida. Frida from the North School. Brenna, we miss you guys too. You have no idea, it's hard. This is the hardest thing for, 
for all of us to endure is because we don't really get a chance to um, see you guys. We're four days a week, and 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 so it's it's kind of surreal that we're having to do this. Um, so thank you for participating. Hello, Marie. Hi. Hi, Zuli. Hey, Cord. Good to see you, honey. Miss you too, Cord. Hi, Tabitha. Um, good question. You will submit your assignments to Molly on the weekend. So you'll have Saturday and Sunday to turn in all assignments. And you will be given a grade for participation. And because of the distance learning, it's very, very important for you all to remember that you have to turn in written work now. This is not a hands-on. Um, this, is, this is not a practical grade. This is a theory grade or a satisfactory academic progress grade. All right. <laughs> Lauren, you said, I love that I can sit outside while in school. This, actually, it's a beautiful day. I'm probably going to go outside as soon as I'm done and get me some vitamins outside of the house. I've been inside the house and in my car and everywhere else. Yes, you may write in your books. Make sure you take lots and lots of notes because there will be a test grade for every chapter. Um, it, it's, it's really, really easy right now for us to worry. So I want you guys to not worry so much about your grades, your hours. Make sure the focus that you are worrying about is um, important, like your family and the health and not um, gathering socially and really, really paying attention to the spread of this. Assignments. Um, assignments are going to be due. It's over the notes. So all the notes that you see online, Jazzy G, um, you're going to have a test over them. Like the notes that I'm going to give you today, the notes Wendy will give you today, there will be a test grade. And you will, re you will be responsible um, for your participation. You guys have to understand now, it's a different type of learning. Okay, it's not the hands-on and clocking hours physically. It is all theory. That means homework, assignments, notes, understanding, test grades, participation. So it's intense. I think this is a better platform for that because sometimes people don't have the um, patience to be in school and participate in the theoretical part but the hands-on part is, is not available to you anymore until we get this done. So, um, good question, Maria. Maria, if you want to grab your Cosmetology Fundamentals textbook, okay? And that is the big textbook. It's a ring binder. You have a workbook and a study guide. The study guide is the smaller book. The workbook is the medium-sized book and the textbook is the actual larger book which has all the information so if you guys want to go ahead and take two minutes we're eight minutes in so we're going to get started in about two minutes um to grab your book pen and paper for materials And I'm realizing that some of you guys are kind of a little bit um, unclear on how this is going to work. Okay, so reading the chapters is up to you. Everything we do online is up to you as well. Um, if you don't have the time to sit down and read in a clear space where you can study, then I suggest tuning in to our studios live 
while school is not a session physically. Um, so if you don't participate, if you don't log in, if you don't participate in the live chat, if you don't answer questions, then you will probably have to delve further in your books on your own time. Um, this is what the whole learning process is about. So um, the takeaway from every assignment is going to be different for that teacher but it's collectively what you need to know to pass the written. So those of you that have questions about the clarity of what you've learned, um, what you need to remember is to gather all the information you can from each chapter that we're teaching you each day, and then expect a quiz or a test over the subject at some point. And as a nail tech and an esthetician, you guys, we've got you covered. Um, all of the bacteriology, uh, bacteriology chapters for all students. And so we're gonna focus on those first. So you guys don't have to worry about if you're a nail tech or an esthetician, the curriculum is equivalent for all of you guys. There will be sessions that will not cover cosmetology that Katie will perhaps teach or Wendy will teach, but do not worry, we've got you covered. All right, let's begin. Hi. All right, so the first thing I wanted to start with was just kind of the prerequisite. Um, this is my little board, my prerequisite. This is what Wendy has me doing, is the prerequisite of a learner. And if you guys can remember from yesterday, um, a prerequisite is a thing that is required as a prior condition for something else to happen or exist. So that means this is necessary. This is essential. This is vital. This is imperative. Even though you might not feel like this is important, this is very important. So that's what my job is in this endeavor for us to be successful in our learning. Prerequisite. Three structures. There's the introduction, which is what I'm doing. Then there's the theory. The theory is what you learn from us. It's the, it's the notes, it's the information, it's the delivery, and then you have the student. And this is where it gets crucial, guys. If you're not a really, really attentive student for online learning, then you should become one especially if you're not an attentive student when it comes to physically showing up. This is going to be your out, okay? So prerequisite, here we go. And we can recap on yesterday when he, got, when he taught you guys about bacteria and microorganisms and non-harmful um, and harmful, not pathogenic, pathogenic. So I'm going to make it fun um, for you guys. Um, Taryn, I'm sorry, honey, but we don't have to eat. We, we're not going to be emailing right this minute. This is our first week. Those of you that are asking for the extra, 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 just need to be calm and hold off. You have your textbooks. You have access to all of the things you need. Um, and so the panic is, 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 you know, kind of out there and we just need to all be, Calm about it and understanding and patient. This is just something that happened. So those of you that are, you know, don't have a printer, I'm sorry. I can't help you in that way. But you guys have to make sure that you're taking notes. The whole of the whole thing about this is handwritten notes and, and videos and pictures. So that's the, that's what we're doing. Okay. Um, I'm not going to read any more emails. Uh Katie's going to text pages. Wendy's going to make that available for you guys. So those of you that are worried about that, just pay attention to the lesson today. Okay, so let's talk about infection control. What is infection control? That means how do we control infection? How do we control contamination? Cross-contaminating, giving somebody our germs, there are certain requirements that are um, needed in a beauty school setting, in a salon setting. So I'm going to recap those with you guys. 
For those of you that don't care about this, this is going to become a huge problem for you in the future. Um, and this is just the requirements for your station. So I want you guys to go ahead and take a minute and write those down. If you don't have this in your station, you are already violating TDLR rules and regulations for what cosmetology students and barber students and tattoo artists have to have. Okay, let's go over them together. The first one is a puncture proof container. You can have as many of those as you want in your station. Okay, so I would use a puncture proof container for something sharp like my shears, my razor, my extra razor blades, um, thinning shears, anything that could puncture a surface, I would use and label pre-sanitized. Second one is the EPA. We provide EPA for you guys in a spray bottle, okay? We don't make you go out and buy it yourself, but the one we use is a barbicide, and it is what's called a tuberculocidal fungicidal disinfectant, and it is mixed with water, the efficacy rate kills bacteria, and that is what's required in salons. The next thing you need to have is a hand gel sanitizer, which I'm very proud, very proud to say students at the North School and South School, you guys have made that a priority. I saw a lot of hand gel sanitizers before we left, and I'm very, very proud of you. OK, and this is key because we can't always wash our hands when we need to. The next thing is something that we probably haven't emphasized and gone over a lot is the blood exposure bag. Your blood exposure bag should contain the items that will help disinfect and stop bleeding. So that's gloves, Band-Aids, styptic powder, um, gauze. EPA, hand gel, it's, it's all there in your state board procedure. Then you need disposable materials, paper towels, Kleenex, emery boards, things that you can use one time and discard. If you don't do that, then the chances of infection spreading are greater. Okay. Make sure that you also have gloves. Gloves are a very integral part, and I notice a lot of you guys decide not to wear gloves when you do color, when you do pedicures or manicures. It is imperative now. Waxing, estheticians, you guys are going to have to wear gloves for facials at this point. So it, it, it's one of those realities that is set in for us all. So I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes to write this down. If you're not sure what to have in your station, you can leave comments below or you can, um, on the next live chat, express your concerns. Okay, so I decided to make this fun. So I'm gonna do fun facts. So go ahead and get your pen and paper. Yes, you guys are clocking in awesome, 90 people, perfect. Okay, so let's talk about fun fact number one. Fun fact number one, if you wanna write this down, because I have a little boards everywhere. Um, under favorable conditions, bacteria can reproduce as many as 16 million offspring in 12 hours. Oh, that's a shock, right? Let me repeat that. Under favorable conditions, bacteria can reproduce as many as 16 million offspring in 12 hours. Okay, so a 12 hour day. You go through your day, you're doing your thing, you're, you're, you're checking a haircut, you're doing a haircut, you're doing a foil or a nice little balayage or a highlight or something, 
and then you don't wash your hands. Yeah. You sit down, you have your sandwich from Subway or from wherever, and you eat. You have fingernails, you have acrylic nails, you're not washing your hands after every client. And now you have to remember at, at 16 million every 12 hours, that's a lot of bacteria and that's how fast they reproduce. So how important, students, how important is it for you to maintain the satisfactory disinfecting procedures as you go on about your day? Yeah, pretty shocking, right? Coming into close, no, coming into close contact, that's even worse. I know that ball and beauty schools were, were, were saying, you guys have to realize how much bacteria and germs and infection that we come into contact with on a daily basis and we do not practice the procedures to disinfect and sanitize properly and that's why our, our industry is probably going to suffer a lot more because a stylist has to be in close contact with their student. I'm sorry, with their client. And teachers have to be in close contact with their student and so on and so forth. Just thought I'd put that out there. Okay, so now we're going to do a little history test, I guess. Not a history test, but something I'd like to kind of remind you. Wendy wanted me to emphasize this. So this is my pyramid. My favorite shape is triangle. Okay. And you guys need to write this down. My favorite shape is a triangle for one reason, because it has a top and a bottom. It has an important part from the top to the bottom. And that's how pyramids work. Okay. So if you guys want to take a minute to look at this pyramid, you'll see that the smallest part, the very top of it is sanitation. And sanitation is not disinfection. It's not going to kill germs. It's just going to remove them from the surface or a porous area. So washing our hands, wiping down a table with a, with a wet rag and, and warm water is sanitation. That is the lowest form of disinfection, I'm sorry, lowest form of what? Killing microbes, killing microorganisms. It doesn't mean that it's not effective because if it's done with disinfection, sanitation can be extremely effective, all right? So that's why it's at the top. So give me examples of sanitation. And Bottle and Beauty School is replying, we will probably see more masks than I wear with people giving close-up services. Yes, she's absolutely right, you guys. And if that's what it takes to protect you and your family, then let's do it. Washing your hands. How often do you wash your hands? I know how many times I wash my hands, probably about 40 times a day because I'm OCD and I have a compromised immune system. So I have to make sure that I wear gloves, I wash my hands before I prepare, prepare food, before I touch my face, before I do anything that has to do with contact with other people. Washing hands, yep, soap and water, amen. Very good. Second level of, of disinfection or sanitation is disinfection, okay? And this is, one of the ones that we have to really, really remember because we use it in beauty school. Do you guys know the ratio of barbicide to water for it to be effective or the efficacy to be in line with our standards? EPA. Disinfection is the standard at which all beauty school salons are 
held to. We have to disinfect and disinfection kills germs, but certain ones, okay? Sometimes they're not effective against, very good, Joel, four ounces to a gallon. They're not good at killing certain tuberculocidal or virucidal bacteria, but they get rid of the most common ones. So disinfection is what we use on our implements, on surfaces, on our hands sometimes, if you can find a hand gel sanitizer. It reduces the amount of microorganisms on a surface, okay? That means it doesn't kill them all, it reduces them. So that means it has to have an efficacy of more than what? Washing your hands more than hand soap. That means it has to sit on the surface for five to 10 minutes, depending on what you're using. Very good, Sydney, four ounces to one gallon. All right. And at the bottom of my pyramid is sterilization. The reason why it is the biggest part is because this particular method of sanitation, disinfection, kills all microbes, microorganisms, even spore forming. And let's let's just talk about spore forming because Wendy went over that with you. Those are the ones that are in, inactive, okay? They're not vegetative, so they're not moving around and multiplying. They're, they're basically shielding themselves in their little house that they build around themselves when the, when the elements get difficult for them to live in. Sterilization kills all bacteria. So you can sterilize baby bottles in hot water. That's what my mom used to do for us. You can have a um, autoclave in your salon, which is a basically a, you know, sterilization. It's kind of an Instapot where the steam comes out, but that is the greatest and most effective form of disinfection, sanitation. Three levels, there's your pyramid. Y'all got it? Good. Okay. Now, what I wanted to do with you guys, another fun fact. Ready? Write this down. Spore forming bacteria do not pose a threat to the environment. And Wendy went over spore forming with you. Um, that's the inactive stage when they form an outer shell around them because the environments get too tough for them. And so they are not migrating. They're not multiplying. They're not spreading. They're actually hiding. But those are kind of the worst ones because they can live in the harshest conditions and then still regenerate after they decide to come out of their spore forming or inactive stage. All right. Fun fact number two. All right. So what I've been finding is I've lived and I'm the type of person I like to plan ahead for everything. I'm a very, very structured person. Um, just let me say for the record that Baldwin Beauty Schools has the best and the brightest teachers and that we're going to deliver all the information to you guys as we get it, as we know it, just as if we were going to school every day. We love and miss you guys every day. Um, and yeah, clock spikes surfaces. If you can find clock spikes, okay. Ava Miller, are they dormant? Okay, so spore forming is not dormant, or is it? Dormant means inactive, so yes. Okay, that was the last fact. The last fact spore forming bacteria do not pose a threat to the environment because they are not active, they are not spreading. They're just there. They do not they do not pose a threat. All right. So those of you that are like me that have probably been out on the wilderness chase of cleaners, because I'm a very neat and clean person. I have a lot of stuff in my house that I use to clean everyday products. Um, and so Wendy wanted me to kind of go over that with you, 
I'm gonna see if I can scoot back and do a little bit. Um, the first item I'd like to present is my 50% isopropyl alcohol. Some of you have this in your cosmetic case or under your sink. Um, they have different percentages of alcohol. This can be used as a sanitation process because it does not kill all bacteria. Okay, it's only going to kill bacteria at a surface level and it evaporates quick. So I personally use this for when I do my nails so I can, my nail polish can stay on longer. Little known tip. The next product I have is something that you probably already have in your pantry or fridge. Um, this is probably the one, one of the most staples and common uses of an item. You can use baking soda to brush your teeth as, as deodorant to clean. It is an all-purpose product, okay? But it's pure. I want you guys to look at the pure where it, it is not to be mixed. So if you guys like to mix baking soda and everything, you want to make your own toothpaste, just be careful if you mix it with the wrong essential oil or if you mix it with the wrong liquid or whatever, it could become something different, okay? So baking soda, one of those things that people don't think about buying, you should. The next thing I have, one of my favorite products ever for my shower, okay, scrubbing bubbles. And this is a bathroom cleaner and it says kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria. So what does that mean? Bactericidal. That means if you have germs and everything, um, yes, Allison, baking soda helps with inflamed gums. You can use it as a toothpaste, just a little water. This kills bacteria in your shower. It is not for use on the bathtub, okay? Do not use this as for your toilet and shower. It is not because it leaves behind a film. That is the only way that germs stay off of a surface is if there's a residue and this creates a residue. I love this one like for literally for the toilet in the bottom of the shower. The next one I have is our old trusty. This is my favorite brand of Lysol. This has a lavender scent. Um, this is pretty much a disinfectant spray. It's gonna kill bacteria on a surface like a doorknob. Um, it's not really meant for soft surfaces like your couch or your bed. Um, it's, it's, it really is just for non-pore surfaces and immediate contact. So it does build up a residue too, but it washes easily off hands. This is the lavender scented one because I like this one better just than the regular scented. So if you can find Lysol now, good luck. Okay, my last, or almost last, this is a staple that we have at the school and that you have at home. This is Windex. This is an ammonia-based cleanser or cleaner. It's meant for glass and smooth surfaces, um, not poor surfaces like wood. It is um, pretty much just an ammonia-based product, so it's not going to kill all germs, it's made for shine and cleaning glass. So you cannot use this as a disinfectant. It will not work. And then the last is my very, very favorite one. I love Lysol too, but Lysol gives me allergies at home. It makes my head hurt. Okay, so put this on your cleaning supply list. This is probably one of the best ones out there and that is the Clorox cleaner. It's got Clorox, which is a natural disinfectant, okay? And it's also got other um, cleaners in it and bleach, and it is 99.99% .99 effective, okay? On bacteria and viruses. I want you guys to take a look at that label, take a picture of it. The other ones do not Take care of viruses on a surface. And this is why it's important that if you can get your hands on a bottle of this, you can make your house and your life. It is a strong one. Yes.
That's why you don't spray a lot of it on there. You don't want, it's, it comes in a mist, so you let it mist. You don't spray it really close to the surface. Um, one of the best cleaners, I've always used it. Love the smell of bleach. Okay, just in case you guys are um, aware today, um, from 12 to 1, you have me, I'm Kimberly uh, from the South School. And then from uh, today, from 2 to 4, you have Boss Lady, Wendy Baldwin. And she's going to be giving you the, again, the food of whatever, whatever she's teaching today, which is going to be in disinfectants. She wants to emphasize how important washing your hands um, I prefer a foam soap as opposed to a liquid, but everybody needs to make sure that they're practicing uh, washing their hands. So she's probably going to delve in on that. So what I would like to do now, we're 35 minutes in, is just take a short break. Um, and if you guys need to grab a sandwich or something, I realize that it's lunchtime. If you want to grab a quick snack, I'll give you five minutes. So it's 1235. We'll take a five minute break and then we will resume our class. Thank you.
just want to give a prayers up, hands up to people who know someone or who's had a family member who's contracted the virus. That is a, um, in this time, very, very difficult place to be as far as um, everything goes. But I pray for those who are not weary and those that are weary um, and that everybody comes out of this with their health and resilience. So if you know somebody who's infected, just pray for them, give them the love and support that they need without making them feel like they are um, uh, not loved or a pariah. So as we uh, resume our, our broadcast, uh, I want to just kind of give you guys a little recap of our schedule. Um, on uh, each day, we have to make sure that we get you guys engaged and pumped up. This is kind of a subject that is not fun, but it's necessary. Um, so between 10 to 11, you have your morning wake up with Jay, Jeremy. And he's going to get you started, your blood going, your positive mind rolling. And then um, you'll have an hour break. And then I will come on with the prerequisite of the learner, which is the introduction to what you're going to be taught before um, hand so that you have an idea of what chapters to study. Um, make sure that you are accessing your cosmetology fundamentals textbook. Okay. That's important. The workbook is just blanks. You cannot know the answers to the blanks without the textbook. So make sure you're accessing any notes that you've gathered from school. If you've shown up to see your theory every day and taken the notes we've given you, good job. You're going to be great. I recognize all non-school students. As long as you put your first and last name for Alona, you will be logged in. Okay. So um, after that, Wendy is going to come to you with your dinner from two to four. That's the meat of all of the subjects that we're teaching because she's going to give you all of the, the, the bones for the tasks, the, the tasks, the tests, all of the stuff, the assignments that you're going to have in front of you. So um, she's going to be on from there. She's given herself the, the, the heaviest course load from all of us because you know, she cares about you guys and wants to make sure that everybody gets their hours and time because she is so sensitive to um, what's going on that it, it just pains her every day to not be there. So make sure you tune in for that. And then Katie's going to have her um, assessment or her recap from five to six. So if you missed the morning or Wendy's live, then you can go and recap with Katie and she's going to do that with you guys. And then um, Molly's going to do theory from four to five on Saturday and Sunday. She's going to basically make sure that you guys have retained the information, turn in all assignments. She's going to give you some information. So make sure you tune in. Okay, so let's get back to business. So what I wanted to do is to make this not so boring is to give you guys a little bit of a roadmap um, because I know some of us don't have the means or the money to go out and purchase a bunch of expensive cleaners like I showed you earlier. But um, I do want to guide you in the right direction when it comes to at-home remedies. I'm an at-home remedy girl. Like I, if I don't have toothpaste, I'll do baking soda and water. Um, if I don't have deodorant, I'll do baking soda. If I don't have this, I'll make that. So everybody knows a little remedy, um, at home that you can mix together, but there are certain ones that you need to avoid. And that's what I'm going to go over with you in this final segment. Um, so I want to give you guys a chance to get your pen and paper out so that you don't make the same mistakes, especially people who don't understand, um, the quaternium, the compounds, all the stuff that's composed of cleaners. So the first one I'd like to show you is this one. Take a picture, write it down. 
but bleach and vinegar do not mix, okay? Bleach and vinegar are not a combination that you want to make the mistake of mixing in your household, especially if you have pets or children, all right? So what it does is it produces a toxic chlorine gas and it's very harmful to your eyes and lungs. So if you feel that burning sensation because you mix these two components together, can someone tell me why these two solvents should not be mixed together? If you guys can go a minute on your phone and Google it and, and, and get the, the version and share it, the true chemical version and share it. But I knew this from a kid. Don't mix bleach and vinegar together. I'm so happy for the participation. You guys are so awesome. Oh, uh, Erica, thank you. Annabelle, thank you. Molly, working on the best ways for you guys to turn <laughs> stuff for right now. Taking notes and making sure to date each one will do fine. And that's what I'm about, okay? Oh, Julia Bennett, vinegar is an acid. It's known as acetic acid. So when bleach is mixed with vinegar, sodium hypochlorite, takes the protein from the vinegar and that reaction generates, ah, she's so right. Very good, Julia Bennett. Excellent observation. Very good. All right, so for our next no-no, ammonia plus bleach equals a toxic chloramine vapors and vapors are airborne. They are in the air. Okay. So if you want respiratory problems and you want throat burns, go ahead and mix it together. I'm not going to tell you anything different. This is a known fact from scientists. If you have both ammonia is found in nail polish remover. Ammonia, ammonia is found in a lot of household cleaning products. And we also have bleach on hand. I don't know about you guys, but this is a very, very important mixture not to combine. And I hope you guys are paying very, very close attention to this and taking advantage of all of this knowledge that I'm feeding to you today. Because as a young person, I probably would have made this mistake not knowing what I'm doing to myself. So if you want to take a picture, write this down. And all of my brainiacs out there are going, yay, Kim. Tell them, girl. Tell them. Okay. So next one. Hydrogen peroxide plus vinegar. No. We're not going to do this ever because I want you to look at the bottom. Okay. Perectic acid is corrosive. That means any surface it lands on, it's going to dissolve it. If you get it in your mouth, if you have it on your hands and you eat and you rub your eyes, it is going to basically abrade your skin slowly. This is something that I hope and love you guys want you to know because I know that there are some desperate people out there who don't have the means to go to the grocery store and get the cleaning supplies that they need that are pre-mixed. So I hope I'm helping you guys today and I hope I'm, I'm, I'm adding to the understanding of what we're really, really facing. Do not recommend it. And hydrogen peroxide is a developer. You guys, Cosmos, we use it all the time with, with color. We have no problem mixing 10 volume, 20 volume, 30 volume. But what if we mix it with vinegar, which is some kind of staple that we have in our closet thinking it's going to clean. 
Yes. Do not recommend it. Yes, Taylor. Okay. That's what I have. Baking soda and vinegar. You might as well just put water on the surface and clean it. It's ineffective. Won't do anything. Anytime you add water to any type of disinfectant, it dilutes its strength and its power. And hopefully you guys will understand that if you have the products that I've mentioned at home and you've added water to them, you reduce the efficacy. And that's the last part of our learning today. But write this down. So if you have baking soda and vinegar, you already got it mixed up, it's not gonna do anything. So I hope that I'm helping you guys with anything that you have questions about. I hope that this YouTube channel is serving a purpose of education and that you guys are taking away from it. Okay. If you have any questions, let's, let's use the next two minutes for Q and A or comments. So Miranda, yes. Thank you, Miranda. I'm happy to help. Mabry, thank the Lord for Google. Yes, ma'am. Didn't actually know. Yeah, there's a lot of information out there and a lot of people that need it. You're welcome, Lynn Thornhill. You're welcome, Kimmy. Thank you. Uh, I wish I was teaching you guys in person. Y'all are so awesome. Marina Flag, you're welcome. Molina Mendez, Sydney Wilbucci, Joelle, Michelle. Ah, y'all are so good. Okay. Well, thank you all for tuning in. And my last ending of this, I want to grab my board. <laughs> So if you guys want to take notes, most important thing that you'll get from this chapter, this word is efficacy, and that's the definition. The ability to produce a desired or intended result. And the result we have for our lives and our future is to make sure that we are properly observing all sanitation and safety precautions when it comes to ourselves. Hi, Lola, I miss you too. I hope you guys enjoyed our time together. I'm looking at your comments in the in the live chat, you're welcome, Destiny. Thank you, Emily. Thank you guys. Thank you guys, because we are on the cutting edge of education for you. And we really, really, really just want to give you guys the um, knowledge and everything we can in this time. Make sure that you're practicing social distancing, that you're adhering to all the laws and regulations that we have out there. Make sure you're not going out unless you have to and i love you guys and i will miss you have a good day